things that I think would have been certainly taboo at some other point in the profession are now the kinds of things that American historians think that they have to answer and are, are pushing forward to answer, and I think that's great. How do you teach American history, which is so dangerous and so bloody and so, you know, in some ways awful, how do you do that in a way that's respectful to the students and to the subject matter? I think we need to really um, take the ideas we feel are important and continue to find ways to translate them in ways that really address the intellectual capacity of young people uh, to think about and deal with really challenging issues in the world. There's still a lot of investment and commitment in writing narratives that demonstrate the Americanness of the subjects of our historical inquiry. But I think it still feels a bit taboo to not write or to write against narratives that ultimately fall back on inclusion and assimilation. I think that the story of Reconstruction is a really important one for uh, kind of uh, lessons today. The story of continuing struggles of multiracial democracy, continuing sectional divisions, um, stories of uh, violence, racial violence. These are stories that are still with us in the present and Reconstruction has a lot, I think, to uh, teach us about um, these ongoing issues, but we'll see if, if people are uh, up for touching it or not. I think historians traditionally have only looked at external actions, at how we, things we can measure, at GDP, at mobility rates. And what's really intriguing to me, and what I think has been a taboo subject, is the history of inner life, subjectivity, um, how people feel about what's going on. When you're in the historical profession, you need to be able to say, I work on X. And when you begin to cross boundaries, whether those are geographical boundaries, disciplinary boundaries, subfield boundaries, it's hard to be categorized, and yet our lives live at those intersections.